Hey again guys and welcome back. Uh, the car that we're going to look at today was produced by Saab from 1968 to 1984. It was considered to be uh, an entry into a larger car market that went beyond that of the Saab 96 at the time. While seen as a large family car in Sweden and neighbouring countries, it was actually marketed as a compact executive car in order to have a wider appeal in a global market. It would eventually be replaced by the Saab 900, although both cars were produced alongside each other until the short-lived Saab 90 entered the market in 1984. So that leaves me with two things to say. Welcome back to the classic Saab guy and thank the universe for the Saab 99. There's a Swedish tradition that's called Names Day, where every day on the annual calendar is given a particular name that perhaps acknowledges cultural and historical references for Swedes. So on April the 2nd, 1964, it happened to be Goodman's Day in Sweden, when after years of planning, Saab started a project that was named after that day. The mandate of Project Goodman was to develop a new and larger car to expand the company's growing market beyond that of the smaller 96 model. However, designer Sixten Sassen and his team of engineers, including a young Björn Envall, still wanted to acknowledge the important details that their core customers in Sweden had come to expect in a car. Swedish winters called for a car that had durability, reliability, good rust proofing, excellent front wheel drive handling, a strong steel skin, good cabin heating and ventilation, and comfortable seating. So it was clear that Saab would not be trying to make a Swedish version of its current competition, such as the Triumph Herald or the Fiat 131. In the end, Saab would be making a Saab. One of the first obstacles in the development of the Saab 99 was the question of what would power the new car. It was believed that the venerable two-stroke engines were perhaps becoming long in the tooth, and the then new V4 engine that came out of a deal with Ford in the early 1960s, and due to debut in the then present Saab 96 in 1966, was also not seen as a viable option for the 99. Saab were aiming to create a finely engineered car and they wanted an engine to suit. Due to an earlier established relationship between Saab engineers and British engine designers Ricardo, which had been developing engines for Triumph, an agreement was made to use an engine primed for the Triumph Dolomite. The 1709cc engine had to be cantered at an angle of 45 degrees to fit under the 99's hood, and due to initial teething problems in the Triumph version, Saab quickly re-engineered the British-built Saab version to suit its needs, including a Zenith Stromberg carburetor, an electric cooling fan, and placing the clutch and gearbox at the front and low down of the engine bay, which later proved to give the engine excellent cooling. While Saab wanted a car with advanced engineering, using heavy gauge panels and reinforced pillars, style was also a major element in the development of the Saab 99. As it would also be said of the later 900, Saab never responded to the so-called fashion trends of the time and so the 99 would be clean and curved, without excessive chrome ornamentation, a simple and timeless design, totally different from its nearest competitor Volvo's 142 and 144 models. From the early design stages, the larger more curved windscreen and concave rear end, now quintessential of Saab design, were evident in Sarsen's initial Italian S sketches for the 99, which had some clear similarities to cars later produced by Alfa Romeo and Citroen. Many styling aspects and incantations were passed around the design studio, but it was Sasson's more conservative approach that won Saab over. The first prototypes were built by cutting a Saab 96 lengthwise and widening it by 20 centimeters. The somewhat unique look influenced the nickname Padan, or the Toad in English, and along with fake Daihatsu badging, would help disguise the new project during its development. Saab have always been safety conscious and has led the field in this area for many years, but at the time of the 99's development it simply wasn't considered a selling point concerning a global market. Customers just weren't interested. Yet Saab still wanted the 99 to be a very safe car regardless, and this went beyond just crash proofing. The car's reinforced steel monocoque body certainly underwent vigorous stress testing that yielded excellent results in both collision and rollover scenarios. It was also crash avoidance capabilities that became a big factor in the car's design. Independent double wishbone suspensions, a twin diagonal split all round brake disc system, coil springs and telescopic dampers not only gave the 99 superb agile handling, but provided the driver with a confident sense of responsiveness when evasive action was required. The Saab 99 would be a modern car ahead of its time. 
The first truly wedge-shaped car, it had excellent aerodynamics and featured innovative design details in both engineering and styling, pioneering ideas that would later become standard for our automobile manufacture for years to come. The 99 predicted door frames that overlapped windscreen pillars and dropped front window quarter lights common on cars at the time. The same could be said of the aircraft-inspired interior with its combing pressed steel dashboard, the fit and finish of the fascia and door trims, the green illuminated instrument panel and orthopedically designed seats. While Salson couldn't include all the advancements he wished for the final production of the car, the 99 included what would become familiar styling motifs for Saabs, such as the wraparound windscreen and clamshell hood. The 99 was unveiled in Stockholm November the 22nd, 1967, and cars were coming off the production lines in the autumn of 1968. It received good reviews from the motoring press at the time, and as the car evolved through many iterations in its 16-year lifespan, its popularity grew, producing two- and four-door models from its Swedish, Finnish and Belgian-based plants, gradually receiving external and internal styling improvements. An automatic, larger displaced fuel-injected engine model was on the market by the early 1970s, followed by the EMS and Combe Coupe versions. In 1973, an industry first was introduced with the inclusion of side impact beams in doors and by the mid-70s power steering was an option on some cars. In 1978, Saab introduced the now legendary 99 Turbo that eventually would phase out the EMS model and by the early 80s Saab had introduced the H engine with many parts and upgrades including a 5-speed gearbox beginning to carry over from the Saab 900 that by then had been in production for a couple of years. Like its predecessor, the 96, the 99 held its own on the international rally sports scene. A police model was made, and to this day the Saab 99 is considered to be the first family car to be fitted with a turbo. Production stopped in late 1984, with a total of 588,643 Saab 99 models being produced. So there you go guys, there's my little brief history of the Saab 99. I will be doing my uh, video on the Saab 90 next, but I may do a short interim video uh, as an owner's perspective of the Saab 99. Thanks guys, and see you next time on the Classic Saab Guy.